Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Force 5. I'm Ken Plume, and this show is all about getting wonderful guests on to share their top five Star Wars figures from their collection, what they, you know, the ones that are really important to them, and they can be from any era, any scale. Uh, and the person that we have on right now is from Star Wars Explained, the incredibly wonderful Molly Damon. Hi, Molly. Hello. Hi. Uh, I just surprised you right before this because you had picked <laughs> out your five. And then what seems to be a recurring bit now with just about every guest that's come on, I've gone, you do have to rank them from your fifth to your first in favorite. So <laughs> the look on your face when I said you had to rank them, is it going to be difficult for you to choose ultimately of the things you've chosen? What is your absolute favorite? I don't think it'll be too hard. However, maybe I was, I can't remember if I asked uh, you this or Alex this, but I have non-Star Wars picks too. It was it just Star Wars figures? It was, it was Star Wars figures. Okay. But you know what? We can roll with it. This is fine. <laughs> I will roll with anything. This is great. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I, I do get... have several Star Wars uh, ones here to, to choose from. So, yeah, no, I listen. We talked about Beanie Babies on the episode <laughs> with Alex. So, and he said, uh, blaspheme that uh, that he was a tag clipper Ugh. and that you were not a tag clipper, that you were a tag protector. It's so strange how that works out too, because I'm a I'm a Funko Pop out of the box person, but with Beanie Babies, I kept those tags on. <laughs> well, <laughs> you knew protectors. the intrinsic value. Yeah. <laughs> also, they had valuable information in them, didn't they? They did. They had their names. Yeah, he doesn't know the names of any of his Beanie Babies now. There's no See? resource he can go. I bet mean, he sneaks in sometimes just to look at your tags. Just remind yeah. himself of the names of the Beanie Babies he has. <laughs> Do you have crossover in the Beanie Babies that you each have? Probably. I, I mean, I wouldn't know which ones I still had anymore because they're all... So my, my mom was a big uh, believer that one day they would be worth something. So she, <laughs> uh, when I moved out of my parents' house, she was the one to like bag them all up individually and like keep them for a while. So... My mom probably knows more about the ones that I still have. <laughs> so they're still a long-term investment. Yes. I'm going to keep them forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Alex's are the play ones because they're the ones that have clearly been abused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is your sort of collecting journey? Were you a big collector of things as a kid? Not really as a kid, no. Because my a lot of my stuff was hand-me-down stuff from my sister who she was 10 years older than me. So I would get a lot of her stuff. So I, I remember having stuff that was kind of, kind of before my time, but just by a little bit. So I had a, a rainbow bright uh, collection set that they all had like yarn for hair and they all like fit into this like rainbow carrying case that was really fun. And I had like strawberry shortcake dolls. So she and... was mid, mid, early to mid eighties was her time period of. Yes. Accruing yeah. things. So I, I always thought that was fun that I, I had stuff that none of my friends had because it was already kind of being phased out by the time. <laughs> and you had zero me. context. There was nothing in the pop culture. It was like, was this a cartoon? Was this a, what was this? Yeah. And I, I kind of, I knew what those characters were, but I never really watched those shows. I was just like, I like braiding this yarn hair. So this is mine now. <laughs> and this smells like <laughs> strawberry. Yeah. And it, well, it, it, that was also a pretty old set. So it smelled like strawberry, but mostly plastic. Like old. <laughs> faded strawberry. By that point, the entire line had just become faded strawberry. Yeah. Which is the yeah. reboot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, faded strawberry shortcake. <laughs> the, the gritty reboot, mm -hmm. uh, which I guess has already been done on Robot Chicken. Yeah, that's Speaking true. Speaking of Star Wars connections. <laughs> uh, so when did you start actively, what was the first thing you remember collecting? Probably Beanie Babies. Uh, it, was, it was Beanie Babies and maybe like Polly Pocket for a little while. Um, but like, I, I know... I had friends who had like way more of those than I did. So I was like, I got to pick one thing and really go for it. And <laughs> that became Beanie Babies for me. 
so that was the one that did that feed into was that where you got your first taste of the chase of going to find these things and yes because you know i've i've watched a few documentaries on uh, uh the the start of the beanie baby craze and how it, it all makes sense now because we had this like little gift shop on the corner that was like next to a gas station uh around where my parents lived and knowing what I know now, like they, the, they didn't sell Beanie Babies at like the big toy stores. They only sold them at the little shops. So I was like, how is it that this is the only place, this random place in this random town that has these? And uh, I just happened to live close by. So I felt really lucky that I could go in there and like grab a lot of the ones that nobody else had. And then of course, eventually the secret got out and then they were like sold out of everything <laughs> going forward. And it was, I mean, it, you know, this is sort of really pre-internet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were a couple of sites, certainly you could find information and things like that. So you must have had the surprise of just showing up and going, I didn't know this was a thing or this was. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was pretty strange. And then, well, eventually my sister got a job at Zany Brainy, which is a slightly bigger like toy store uh i guess they were trying to be kind of like toys r us but they sold beanie babies so i was like oh i got the direct hookup now <laughs> so then yeah, the inside connection she became my beanie baby mule that i would <laughs> she would just funnel them into me what was the biggest get that she was able to get to you at that point she was able to get she snagged the original Red Bull that was named Tabasco before the company Tabasco said, no, no, you can't name it that <laughs> and took it off the market. So we still have the Tabasco Red Bull. And I so, think it had white paws instead of red. So if Alex had that, it wouldn't make a difference because that name tag would have been gone and it could have been any release of that Red Bull. Yeah, anything. It's, uh, it's special, it's special now. Do you still have that uh, readily accessible or is that? I I don't have it here. I don't, I think that's still at my parents' house. Uh, but there's, there's a couple that were like that, that like were misprinted or misnamed or like there were a couple frogs I know that like had different color, <coughs> uh, color patterns on them. Um, but yeah, like for me, I always liked the idea of, something that was mislabeled or misprinted and there it was kind of like a a mistake i wanted all the mistakes <laughs> <laughs> i think that speaks to a very a deeper philosophy yeah yeah so <laughs> when did you start not collecting beanie babies like when when did that sort of phase out um i remember the big craze for the the mini ones that were on mcdonald's happy meals right and it was maybe a couple of years after that that like kind of started to fade away and i was like getting older and i like you know for a while i had them all kind of like displayed in my room on shelves and stuff and then eventually i was kind of like well no one really thinks these are cool anymore i'm gonna keep them but maybe i'll just not cover my walls with them on shelves <laughs> So that must have been a, a, a nice transitional process of just the the boxing of the beanies. Yeah, yeah. They all got an individual tag covers and bags. So then those bags went into bags. And so it was like, okay, it was it was like retiring my collection at that point. It certainly seems to be a cycle that a lot of childhood collectors go through, that you get to that point where you're like, maybe I've moved beyond this. Maybe I'll put these in a box and put this away. And then years yeah. later you go, oh, that stuff in that box, I kind of still have an emotional attachment to that. Let me take them out of the box. Maybe I'll just put like a couple yeah. on the shelf. Then it goes, well, maybe a couple more. And then, oh, they've released more of these things. I should look again. And then suddenly <laughs> it's a slippery slope and mm -hmm. you're sliding downhill back into collecting. Is there anything for you that's been like that where you've gotten back into it? Um, I mean, my my next real collecting obsession, I guess, would be the Funko Pops. Uh, and I don't know that I've really gotten back into it. I still will get them occasionally. There's um, just so many of them. 
there is so many and it's it's the same kind of with the beanie babies there got to be a point where there was just too many and i was like at one point i could have had all of them and now i there's no way i can have all of them so i just kind of stopped trying and that's kind of how i got with with the star wars funko pops because also i don't have room for them anymore like <laughs> i have hundreds of them and you know i like to take them out of the box so they're just they're just everywhere and you know you can only cover your walls in so many shelves i've got 4 8 12 like 15 shelves in here covered you rotate them out like you know now i'm going to display these for a bit and swap them out no i don't i don't like rotate a museum them. like you're curating your <laughs> display I, I don't rotate them but like i would like to get just a few more shelves up so that i can try to display all of them because i still have some boxes of, of ones that won't fit anywhere else in my in my room <laughs> <laughs> so what that means is you need to get a bigger house yes we have to move ultimately that's the only solution to a yeah. collection is get a bigger house <laughs> yeah i did it's just out of frame up here um but i did once i realized i needed to make a, a background for filming purposes um I decided to take all of the, the the women in Star Wars Funko Pops that I had and like make a little shrine for them. So like not all of the women in Star Wars, but a lot of the big main characters I have kind of displayed in their own area. And then Grogu came along and now he's slowly taking over. <laughs> Much like everything. everything in Star Wars. <laughs> yes. Just slowly. So, but that would, would you say that that is uh, your current completionist obsession? the grogu stuff is the grogu stuff yeah and it's not a, it's not even really a completionist thing because like again they they'll slap his face on anything <laughs> like they is there anything grogu, you'll pass up there is a grogu uh crock pot that i do not need and do not want but should something <laughs> happen to your current crock pot that grogu crock pot is in like flash yeah that's true it's it's just that that becomes a point in my brain where I'm just like, really? Like, do I, do I need, I mean, no one needs this many Grogu uh, things, but like but a it's functional. Pot? It's functional though. <laughs> I mean, that way you should be able to justify it. Maybe if you enter, entertain more and have more food out, that and is then you true. can justify having a serving Grogu. <laughs> All my serving dishes are now green. Yes. Cute little faces. <laughs> All your silverware as well. Mm-hmm. He's so, slowly creeping into our kitchen though, because somebody got us uh, some like magnets that are now on our fridge and like our dishwasher. Somebody got us some Star Wars uh, tongs. So like it just slowly creeps into other parts of our house, which is inevitable. <laughs> Much like the stream when your AC goes down, <laughs> yes. it slowly goes into the rest of the house. You have to mm -hmm. find your whole house is a studio now. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, we have several filming locations throughout the house now. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you make it sound like it's an emergency. Well, we can always fall back to plan C. <laughs> yeah. Let's head back yes. to that studio. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go number five on your list of, uh, we're just going to say your list of collectibles. Yeah. But what is your, your fifth choice? Now that you've had to emotionally rank them from five <laughs> to one. Okay. Um, I will go with a lot of these are going to be Funko Pops because that's mostly what I collect. Uh, but I will go with my Force Ghost um, Qui-Gon Jinn Funko Pop, oh. which he, uh, you know, at the time we had not really seen much of Force Ghost Qui-Gon and now we've, we've gotten a, a live action version of him. So that kind of made this a little bit more special for me. But I remember this one specifically was one of the first Funko Pops that was a special release for a convention that like, I, I was like, I know I'm not gonna go to that convention, but I am gonna search every shop until I find <laughs> this one because there, there hadn't been too many Force Ghost Funko Pops at the time. This was one of the first ones. So I just thought it was, it was so cool and I had to have it. So That's I remember kind of a finite number of force ghosts you can do at this point. Yeah. But now they do force ghost versions for 
for everything Char- characters that it doesn't make sense for you know they did one for snoke they did one for ahsoka i mean that's a and... fundamental misunderstanding come on funko <laughs> Yeah, they just want to be like, hey, look, it's glow in the dark. Yeah. But like this one, this one was one of the first ones where I was like, okay, yeah, I, I need that. So did you um, just run across it in a shop or did you eBay it? Did you have to? I or... believe we we found this uh, like comic shop that sold uh, figures and stuff way out, uh, like probably an hour away from where we live. And I forget the the original reason why we went there. I think Alex was looking for a Game Boy Advance uh, to to rekindle his his love for that. <laughs> and they they had it there, and I kind of like haggled a little bit on the price with them because it was like getting more and more expensive as time went on because it was a convention exclusive. Um, but yeah, then. Uh, that's basically where I came across it. And I think I went there twice because the first time I was like, I don't know if I'm going to pay that much for it. And then I went back and I was like, yeah, no, I want it. <laughs> they, they knew they had you. They, they knew you were coming back. They knew they had me. And now you have him. And now I have him and he's mine forever. And but so- he's just collecting dust up here with the rest of them. <laughs> But he's out of the box. Yes. He's living his best life. He's free. He's breathing the free air, unlike Alex's (laughs) collection. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's very rare for me to keep something like an action figure or a toy in the box. Um, Because, yeah, I I just want to set them free and display them in a way that isn't easy and stackable, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> well, to be fair, to be fair to Alex in the conversation we had, he did say that a lot of his leaving in boxes comes just from laziness mm-hmm. in displaying. Yeah. So that is true. <laughs> I, I think maybe I convinced him to do an unboxing special mm. where he just takes the things out and actually yeah. enjoys them. Yeah. We'll have to see if he ever gets his Cobb Vanth figure in. <laughs> yeah. What he does. I, he, he did just get an email saying that it got delayed. By no, I, the crisis on his face. The, <laughs> I don't know emotionally if he can make it a month. I don't know what's going to have to happen to the support system mm. to keep him going in that time. Yeah. So, but it, the the looking at that Funko Pop, he looks like candy. That is that is the most candy looking. Like it looks like there should be gumdrop eyes. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's like bright blue greenish. It does. It does. Like these are probably some of the cheapest ones to make because they're not really painted. So yeah, it's just it's, the it's, offset of the eyes. They look like gumballs. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that these are <laughs> like some of the some of the exclusive ones are the ones that aren't really that intricately detailed or painted or anything. Are there any ones that you haven't been able to get or find that you want? Mm, there's one uh there's there's the Queen Amidala Funko Pop that is one that one of the older ones that they didn't I guess they didn't make a ton of those uh, but anytime I see a Padme Funko I get really excited and I get it because there weren't a lot of those made like a lot of different versions but there's one of her in her full like Queen Amidala dress that I do not have and like a lot of those are pretty expensive to to find nowadays that you can find them on ebay for a couple hundred dollars so because i've run out of room for them and i've got so many already (laughs) my my list of ones special ones that i would really like to still have it's it's a pretty small list but that was probably at the top of that list well you know speaking of difficulty finding padme things and sort of in the wake of where's ray and that merchandising fiasco with Force Awakens, do you feel that things have gotten better as far as representation in the products that are available now? Yeah, I do think so. And since I started specifically displaying all the women of Star Wars, Funko Pops specifically, uh, I definitely think there are a lot more of those available because there's, I don't know how many Ray Funko Pops are out there now. I have probably 15 at least of just Ray uh, and Leia. And I remember after uh, 
Rogue One came out, there were several, like eight maybe versions of Jen or so, which I was like, that's great and everything, but like, does does Jen need eight versions? And the answer is yes. <laughs> the I mean, answer is yes. I mean, if if Han Solo can have every outfit, right? Then speaking of Jen, yeah. Yeah, and they like a lot of hers. There's there's a little kid Jin Funko Pop, which is cool. There's her uh, holding the little stormtrooper doll. There's the, all all of her different versions. Her imperial disguise. Yeah, all those look really good. With hat, without hat. Mm -hmm. I mean, Funko. Sure. Come on, Funko does really lean in to variations. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. it's. You know, I I think it's weird that the only things that seem to come out when a show comes out are the Funko Pop. Yeah. Like the action figures aren't out. Nothing mm -hmm. else is out. But those Funko Pops, I don't know what, what Faustian pact they've made <laughs> to get their product out there first and foremost. Yeah. But it is terrifying, the yeah. turnaround time they have. And it's like when I was in at my height of collecting Funko Pops, it was mostly Star Wars at the time. And then, and now there's a Funko Pop for like every TV series ever. Uh, and, and past that, you know, they've, they're making Funko Pops for anything now. But like, I remember when I started collecting them, they were just mostly Star Wars ones, or at least Star Wars had, had been making the most variety of them. Right. Are you and Alex a Funko Pop yet? Has anyone done a custom Funko? They yeah they have uh Big J Customs has done a couple of things for us and he made custom Funkos of of me and Alex and they're they're over in our other filming location <laughs> <laughs> out of the box or in the box still they those are still in the box just because they're they have our boxes. names yeah they're custom boxes so got to keep those too <laughs> so what then is your number four choice on your list. My number four choice would be, now I'm like, how do I rank <laughs> these? Um, I have a couple of different Grogu ones. So I will go for this little Grogu, which is just a regular Grogu Funko Pop. But I got really excited when we found out that he was going to get a little chainmail shirt. And so at the time, I just like took a, a metal bracelet that I had and I put it over his regular Funko Pop. And I was like, <laughs> boom, did it. I just created my own Funko Pop. He looks so cozy. He Your chainmail could be cozy. <laughs> and like, I'm shocked that they haven't made a chainmail shirt Grogu yet because they've made so many Grogu Funko Pops. But this one will always be special to me because it was, it's a custom by me. <laughs> it's custom little chainmail shirt. That should be the name of your custom Funko shop. It's custom by me. Custom by me. <laughs> <laughs> by me for me. It's no. It's not for. No one can buy them. It's just for myself. <laughs> Do you remember what the first Grogu was that you bought? Oh man, the first Grogu Funko Pop. Or just mm. a Grogu thing in general that you bought. Oh man. It probably was just one the first Funko Pop that came out. It might have been this one actually, because now that I think about it, if you take his little uh, chainmail shirt off, he's it's him with holding his little soup bowl. So that might have been one of the first ones that that came out for him. But I have so many Grogu things now that I couldn't tell you what the first one was. <laughs> well, I remember when you know because of the secrecy of his reveal that that sort of grogu desert that existed mm -hmm. for a short time where everyone was like what will be the first product that actually yeah. makes it to shelves to fulfill this incredible demand and it was uh, probably it was funko. probably funko <laughs> and that that was a really cool time too because i remember the me and alex got invited to go to the it was part of the toy fair but it was like disney plus exclusive stuff so it was all Star Wars stuff. And we got to go to that in New York. And they had on display a bunch of the brand new like Grogu stuff. Uh, and it was the first time we saw the, the animatronic one where he like, you can like pet his head 
and he'll like open his mouth and coo and stuff. And I just thought that was like the coolest thing <laughs> ever that I was like taking video of it at the, the toy fair event and like posting it on Twitter. And people were like, oh my gosh, where is that? How do I get that? And I'm like, it's not out yet, but I, <laughs> I'm here with it. <laughs> do you own that one? Did you eventually get it? Oh yeah. He's back there. <laughs> when of, was the last time you talked to him? <laughs> it's been a minute because uh, our dog Hilo, anytime he hears any of the Grogu's that make noise, he kind of like, he's like, I don't think I like that. I don't know what it is and I don't like it. <laughs> Something is invading my space. Yeah. My emotional space. This <laughs> this is Hilo time. This is not any other. To take those Grogu's out. Do the animals like the Grogu's? I mean, between Pippin and Hilo, who who Pippin, tolerates them less? Pippin tolerates them fine. I guess Hilo would be the one to tolerate him less because of anything that makes cuter sounds than he does. Like, he's like, no. It's an automatic threat. Yeah. And uh, there, there have been a couple of times where he's gotten a hold of like one of my plush Grogu's thinking it's like a dog toy. So if he gets a hold of something like that, he'll just destroy it. Has he destroyed a couple of them? He's yeah, he's definitely destroyed at least one plush Grogu, which <laughs> it's a good thing he's cute and he's our dog because otherwise he'd be out. <laughs> So, so we're to the middle of your list. What's your number three choice? I think my number three is going to be, um, <laughs> I, I just have so many Grogu things that I'm trying to think of like which one of these it would make sense to, to rank over the other one. Um, I'll do, I'll do this one next. It's another Grogu uh, thing, but this one is actually Lego. So it's it's one of, it's the Grogu brickheads, little guy. And oh, I don't think I've ever seen the brickheads. Yeah. So he they always I think they always come in sets of two. So it's him, and then there's a little Mando one that goes with it. But it's him in his little pram, and there's a fun story with this one because. This was uh, when we started doing our Lego live streams. We started that over the pandemic. This was one of the first sets that I actually built, just like a, a little one that I built by myself. And uh, after I had finished building it on the stream, I was kind of like holding it up to the camera, trying to show it off. And I dropped it and like <laughs> part, of, part of the ear popped off. And, and I, like, I just had such a visceral reaction to dropping any Grogu that like it became a joke now that like <laughs> don't give Molly any Lego to hold she'll drop it especially if it's a Grogu so <laughs> that but became have, but you haven't dropped a Lego since sure we'll, we'll say that you have it that never <laughs> happened again yeah not, not anything important like any of the Grogu stuff no 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 uh, but uh so that became someone made a gif of that of me dropping it and then just having like a <laughs> a very intense reaction of like, oh no, what have I done? Uh, so that GIF now comes up on screen anytime anyone sends in a super chat for the Lego live streams. And so it's just a running <laughs> joke at this point that if it's if it's a Lego Grogu, Molly's gonna drop it. Do you remember what the first GIF of you that was made for the stream was? Was it that? Probably, yeah, because that was pretty early on because we only started doing the Lego streams during like the the middle of lockdown for the pandemic so that was that was probably one of the first ones i'm sure there's <laughs> i'm sure there's a lot more that i don't know about that i would i i could probably find them on our discord actually that's where most that's of where them they live. end up yeah <laughs> <laughs> but now he's intact he's safe secure he's safe and you, you've been holding him for a solid two minutes now with no drops so yeah, I've gotten really good at holding this specific one because it was the first one that I dropped. But I mean, I certainly fear watching those Lego streams that there's going to be a time when Alex is moving something that he's <laughs> nearly finished just to get a better camera angle or get at something and something's going to happen. Yeah, well, he so when we built the Falcon Lego, you know, that that thing is huge. And 
we we got like an acrylic stand for it and this is like the official lego stand wasn't it mm -mm. or was it a second a third party it was a third stand. party like acrylic stand so when alex picked the picked the entire falcon up to try to put it on the stand pieces just started falling off of it left and right and i just saw the life drain from his face just knowing that he's gonna have to go back through and like figure out how to piece this back together but he got it up on the stand um but yeah that was that was kind of a nightmare and he's he since gotten a new stand it's it's on that stand it's on now, that one and it's never going never coming else. off it's <laughs> never coming off that stand <laughs> yeah alex is very uh against the idea of gluing legos together because of the lego movie um and the what did they call it the the crackle glue or something like that so yeah, i've joked the package about was crumpled wasn't it yeah I've, I've joked about gluing certain lego sets craggle. together that's it was craggle craggle yeah um i've joked about gluing certain sets together like this one because i of the joke of me dropping it but and you're not going to take no. it apart yeah but that's but that's your set if you want to glue it together that's true i don't know together. that he would ever forgive me though well <laughs> other than us talking about right now would he find out <laughs> <laughs> probably not <laughs> you, you, would he go in and go you know what i bet i could drop this thing right now and we'll see <laughs> if you glued it together or not <laughs> although i think even glued together if you dropped a lego onto a floor i think it would shatter regardless yeah probably and like i don't know that i would want to take the time to glue all these little pieces together take it back apart and yeah i mean the one thing i mean i can see why alex would be against it because there's been many a time if he was gluing as he went when he's gotten to the end of a page and saw all the extra pieces that he <laughs> overlooked putting in i can <laughs> see where he would not want to be a gluing person yeah yeah and have cause... to go back and try and why well, you couldn't fix it at that yeah. point yeah forever You'd frozen be <laughs> with a bag of extra pieces that should have been somewhere in there <laughs> But it's, I mean, you've now done it on stream a couple of times. How distracting is it to be trying to build those things on stream and being engaging mm -hmm. with it's, an audience? Sometimes it's easier. Sometimes it's harder. It depends on the set, I guess. Um, but the other, the big Grogu Lego set, which is back here on one of my shelves, that's the first one that I had built just me because usually alex builds and i'll sit and like monitor chat and stuff like that so it'd be a very I, boring stream if it wasn't two of you doing yeah it. it's well alex tried to do that for a little while on twitch and it, yeah he said that after having two people on a stream doing it just doing it by himself there would be times where he would just be silent because you're concentrating on all these little pieces in the page yeah, it is it is hard sometimes to to not get in the zone and and you know stay engaging and and talk to talk to chat and stuff like that. But or look up I, after a couple of pages and go, "Well, there are 70 super chats." Yeah. that are just sitting here. <laughs> streams and would like, never end. He 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 like if he tried to do it by himself, he would never get anything done all the way cuz he would get distracted by a question and then <laughs> It would take a year to build one of those big sets. Well, the that you're able to finish any of them and then find places in the house for them is astonishing <laughs> to me. Is oh. there a limit? Do you see a limit after which you're like, we can't, we can't get the Death Star. We just there's <laughs> no place to put the Death Star. Well, I I am very pro trying to hang some of these from the ceiling, but he's too afraid to hang the big ones because if they if they if they were to fall then they're just that's that's over that's done um i mean it would be an incredible anecdote though true yeah where were you <laughs> when the falcon fell <laughs> <laughs> the animals might not like it too much yeah, yeah. that i'm well, sure we... would be a shocking moment also i bet it would hurt if you're walking under one of those sets they're not light sets yeah and the, the amount of pieces that would just fly off into corners never to be seen again and until we were to move we would we would just continue to hear that find, sound in the vacuum yeah yeah we would just <laughs> find little pieces of lego 
everywhere forever. Oh, remember when we had the Falcon? Well, here's another piece. <laughs> a gentle reminder. Never to hang your Lego. Mm. So do you see a threshold? Because they it doesn't seem like they're stopping releasing the massive sets. Um, I mean, at some point, yeah, we'll have to be a little more picky and choosy, but we... Uh, Can you, you have know, a Lego got... garden outside? <laughs> yeah. And that's your statuary in your Lego garden? Would it be a garden or would, would it be a cemetery at that point? <laughs> if, Depends if on if start, they got knocked over. If we start putting them outside, there's there's not it's not going to last too long over there. But there might be some sets that we'll give to friends who have kids, um, stuff that we just yeah don't don't want to or don't have room to display. We'll probably just end up trying to trying to give them away to to some friends. And then they just become loose Legos at that mm -hmm. point. As nature yeah. intended. Yeah. The circle of Legos. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of this grand circle, what is your number two choice? So now, now you have, this is the ultimate judgment of what's going to be number two and what's going to be number one. Okay. I know what's going to be number one. Um, so the other one that I have here, it's another Lego. And it is one of the two... ATAT -AT drivers <laughs> from the big like ATAT -AT set that that just recently came out and the reason why this is on my list is because uh in a certain point of view the the book for Empire Strikes Back um Christy Golden wrote the story of the ATAT -AT drivers or maybe it was the Veers story and the ATAT -AT drivers were in it either way uh, she named the two drivers at, like she gave their TK numbers for mine and Alex's birthdays. So this one is specifically the girl, which she has hair, but she's wearing her helmet. So she doesn't have hair right now, but she is a girl. And so this one would have been TK5187, which is my birthday. So this will forever be my Lego as me. <laughs> How does that feel to be in canon like that? It feels great. And in I, Lego, in canon and in Lego. I mean, it's it, it'll it'll feel better if I have like an actual official uh, Lego minifig one day. But until then, this will do. Uh, and this it's it's always really cool to to tell people about that. And like when we found out they were making a big ATAT -AT set, we were like, oh man, I I wonder if they'll have the drivers in there. And sure enough, they're in it. And one of them is a girl with red hair. So I was like, it's it's me. It's got to be me. <laughs> so it has the swappable hair where you can take the helmet off and put the hair on? It does. Yeah. So and I I don't have the hair in here. It's it's probably in in our other room. But how do you display it? Are they just permanently inside the set? This one has been inside the set. But I now that I have it out, I'm going to put it out next to my my custom Funko Pop, I think. Start building up that area? Yeah, just start building up things that are custom me and things that are basically me. Yeah, well, I, mean, I, I wouldn't say basically. I mean, it's it's pretty well stated that, <laughs> that that's representing you in the Star Wars universe. So Yeah. So officially you. Yeah, yeah. So this... And a Lego. You get to be a Lego. Mm-hmm. It's it's a, such a cool thing, and like the fact that she did that was was so cool. She she's she's super nice, and I I love the the stuff that she Christy Golden has written. And so yeah, when when we got that book, we had kind of been told about it because uh, someone had asked for our birthdays. So we were like, hmm, I wonder if that actually happens. And sure enough, I remember when we got that book. We flipped to that story and, and searched for something about the AT-AT -AT drivers and there were our numbers. So now you need to be, build a brickhead yes. of your character. There are, yeah, there are people that do custom brickheads. So maybe I'll commission one for myself and put it. Put it next, next to. Next to Grogu. <laughs> now does Alex's minifig have a mustache? Did they gift him a mustache <laughs> on the minifig? I don't think so. Um, he may have drawn one on at this point, but, <laughs> or maybe he just, he does that on everything though. 
I mean, he's yeah. going to draw a mustache on his cop van. He's going to really delineate it more. He could just swap the head of someone who does have a mustache, I guess. So Biggs. So yeah. he's going to take the Biggs and put it on the AT-AT driver. Mm-hmm. I could see that happening for sure. That's the ultimate. Uh, I, I was watching a video last night, uh, a Mr. Sunday Movies video that made a reference to you all and uh, asking for help on Star Wars lore. <laughs> but the clip they used, I had never seen Alex during the mustache period. Oh, oh yes. The dark times, uh, and, the dark yeah. lighter times. <laughs> it, it was surreal. I, yeah, think he, he, uh, I think he, he pulled it off well. <laughs> yeah, he just, he he said for the longest time that he couldn't grow a mustache or a beard and that he had tried and people were like, well, try harder, you know, like. <laughs> and so it, it took- Trust the in the force. Yeah, it, it took the release of the, the Squadrons video game for him to be like, all right, you know what? I'm going to grow one for this. Because it, it only makes sense if I'm going to be a pilot that I have a mustache. And when they streamed the game for the first time, it was him and a bunch of our other friends that all also grew mustaches and they became must, mustache squadron. Uh, Forever immortalized. So, yeah, yeah. And he he's not afraid to admit that I did, anytime he was on screen for something special, like he was on a Funhouse video playing squadrons with them. And uh, the the last year's April Fool's video where he was like pretending to film uh, the audition, the yeah the audition to be a pilot. Those two times he let me fill in his mustache with makeup to make it just a little more fluffy pop, looking, pop a little more. Yeah, cameraman and, uh, made a camera ready. <laughs> yes, as um, as any any good makeup artist on a film would do, they would. Yeah. So and then. He, I, I loved the first time I did that. I loved the look on his face because he was like, "Oh yeah, there it is. Like, <laughs> there's, there's the the Biggs mustache that I want." Finally, the dream, the dream realized. <laughs> yeah. There should be one. Mu- he should, he should grow it at least once a year. Maybe a charity thing where he just brings yeah. the mustache back out of retirement. Yeah, it's it's just that he doesn't like having facial hair really, and he doesn't like take care of it to the point where it, it's like soft it's always just like really <laughs> sharp and scratchy so <laughs> that's why anyone who's like grow the mustache back I'm like no that's okay <laughs> so <laughs> we maybe can... maybe we need to get him in touch with the actor who portrayed Biggs to give him mustache tips oh yeah Garrett Kagan would Real... absolutely be his guru tips. yeah be his his mustache force ghost to show up <laughs> and guide him in the ways of the stash. Oh, now I'm imagining anytime his mustache comes up in conversation, a little light blue sparkly mustache appears on his face. <laughs> so like it's just the stash that's a force ghost. <laughs> Please, at some point, and in one of now that you're doing a lot of the editing on the Q and A's. Please put a force mustache, a force ghost mustache on him. Just randomly at some point, just drop it in like it just magically appears and then just disappears. And just did I notice did something happen? What just <laughs> yeah, just a little glint glimmer, yeah. A little force ghost mustache. Yeah. Just just to show that Biggs is always with him. Yeah. And always it, guiding it's... him. That's how he manifests. He can't manifest fully <laughs> as a force <laughs> yeah. ghost because he wasn't trained. Right. But that's how he manifests just as a force stash that appears. Yeah. The stash lives on. <laughs> there, there's my gauntlet I'm throwing down. Please <laughs> drop it in randomly at a point that it feels natural. Mm-hmm. And a blink and you missed it, force stash. Yeah. Appears. <laughs> so we've got to your number one choice. Mm-hmm. So was it difficult to get to this point? Or did, were you pretty clear at the very beginning that this was going to be? ultimately your number one I was I think I was pretty clear with this one that this was going to be my number one um I had to decide if I was going to do all Grogu stuff uh (laughs) or not and so when it comes to this one I was like you know I, I I need to put this one as my number one because it is my favorite 
thing that I own and it's probably got my favorite story behind it. I'm sitting here trying to fix her lightsabers that broke apart, but it's the, the dark gray black series six inch because when this came out, so many people were like, oh my God, Molly, you have your own figure in Star Wars because I had done the Dark Ray cosplay before Dark Ray was a thing. So just the fact that so many people think of me when they see her, I was like, that- that the cosplay means- was pretty, pretty predictive and accurate as to eventually what we saw. Yeah, which, which was so crazy to me uh, and, and so cool. So now any dark ray stuff, I have to have it. It's like Alex with Biggs. And and this one is easier to do than Grogu because there aren't that many dark ray things out there. I've got this, I've got her Funko Pop down here as an honorable mention. Um, and then I have the Gentle Giant one. The convention exclusive. That they mm-hmm. came out, I think last year when there was yeah. no convention, but there was an exclusive. <laughs> yeah. So any, any dark gray stuff I can find from here on out, I I will scour the internet for because she just, she means so much to me. Now, are you going to do the cosplay again? I would like to, um, I want to get the, the actual hinge lightsaber, like one that I can use for cosplay specifically. Have they done a reproduction of it yet? Like, I don't think it's like Galaxy's Edge yet, right? No, they haven't. They, someone did one. A custom? It was like a, a year or two ago. Yeah, it was like a custom custom build one. And like, you can kind of find similar looking ones, but I might have to commission someone to to build a, a custom one now because Alex did get me the replica for my birthday, which hasn't arrived yet, but it's, I don't think it's one that you can put blades in that light up. Right, it's so it's just, just the hilts. Yeah, it's just the hilts uh, on a stand. So if I can find a replica lightsaber to use for cosplay, then I would like to do it again. But I might just break out my original cosplay and call it concept art dark ray. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's even more niche uh, and original. So Based I, on I might... the original design by me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is funny, like when, when the art of the rise of Skywalker book came out. I was like, please be in there, please be in there. And sure enough, there is some concept art for dark Ray in that book. And I was, it didn't look like my cosplay, but in my heart, I, uh, I imagined that somehow they came across my, my cosplay and they were like, yeah, no, let's, let's have that happen. Was that at celebration you did that? Or was that at dragon con? This was at dragon con 2017, I think. Now, yeah. was that the, do you often do cosplay at Dragon Con? I did for a little while. I would do like one big one every year. Um, but like I I'm I'm such a lazy cosplayer. I, I don't really know how to sew. So like any cosplays that I do, they're just kind of mishmashed together. Uh, and I love a good cross play of something. So one year we did a big group costume and called it star bros so it was like the bro versions of of star wars characters <laughs> so for that i was leia brogana so that's kind of like the the thing that we like to do more at at dragon con which is like make silly uh versions of cosplays that are just fun to do in big groups of people but alex is a little cosplay shy isn't yeah, he yeah yeah and like more and more these days, we are involved with doing panels and stuff at, at the conventions that we're going to. So we don't have as much time to dedicate for, you know, walking around in costume as we used to. You don't want to do but your panels in costume? I, I have done it before. I think I did. Um, I did a panel for the the rise of skywalker speculation at dragon con whatever year that was but i did that in my dark ray because i was like it, this is absolutely part of the speculation like how much of her are we gonna see would that so have been I, 2019 would that have been right before the release yeah 
yeah the, yeah, the, the last the, the last big dragon con before mm -hmm. yeah uh but alex hasn't done like he hasn't done a full bigs no he he wants to get an actual flight suit because the ones that he's done in the past are like the really cheap flimsy ones that you can just buy on amazon um the, the party city yeah yeah <laughs> uh they're what? made out of like the same material that those inflatable t-rexes are made out of they're basically yeah. a pair of giant orange You're saying parachute. it doesn't last through the day <laughs> yeah it just disintegrates <laughs> but yeah, no I he mean, needs yeah he needs to go full on expertly I, I mean he needs to reach out to paul paul knows how to put together an outfit yeah paul will teach him how to put together a flight suit yeah and you know, as he's constantly reminded every time he thinks of Paul, Paul has actually held Biggs's helmet in his hands. Yeah, that's true. So if and anyone could help him put together a full X Wing outfit. Yeah. And although like, I think he needs to go cape. I think he should go cape. Ooh, Maybe the yeah. X Wing outfit with the cape. Ooh. I hadn't thought about that. That that would that would look cool. The thing is, uh, like Dragon Con is always in uh, Labor Day weekend and in, in Atlanta. So it's like a thousand degrees. So, <laughs> so it's, you're saying you want the, the really light inflatable T-Rex X-Wing outfit for that? You might actually want that one. Yeah. That might actually be the more comfortable, uh, option or, or, or not a dark uh, or a heavy dark Ray robe to have to wear around all day. Yeah. It's, it gets, I mean, you, you're going to get sweaty at a place like dragon con, no matter what, but it's just like what That's level of part. sweaty of dragon con is to see how costumes break down and people are <laughs> yeah. just like i'm tired of wearing this helmet i'm tired yeah. of this sash i'm tired of this ammo belt i'm tired of this so instead they're just dragging around 20 pounds worth of discarded costume pieces mm -hmm. throughout the day rather than wearing them that that the end of the day cosplayer is my yeah. favorite site at dragon con oh oh yeah it's it's so funny to see like a drunk passed out superman just like out in the bushes somewhere and you're like wow what what would super what would real superman think of this but also he would be like yeah buddy i've been there <laughs> but it's really nice that that cobra commander is helping them out yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's friendship <laughs> yeah or like the the line at starbucks for dragon con is always a great fun to just to just people watch because you see all the characters hanging out next oh, it's to a each pop other. culture quiz yeah <laughs> what, what's that one from what's that uh -huh. hold on does anyone know who that i remember sitting up in the lounge at the hilton and i don't know if you're familiar with the film zardoz but mm -hmm. it's a very bizarre 1970s film uh starring sean connery through okay. most and he has a big handlebar mustache and he runs around in most of it in uh, a red strapped version of essentially Borat's uh, bikini. Oh no. So this is mid seventies, <laughs> incredibly hirsute. Yeah. Handlebar yeah. mustached, ponytailed, Sean Ooh. Connery running around <laughs> and we're sitting in the lounge and there was a group of 10 that were on the <laughs> upper level walking around just casually walking around that's so cool and that for me is dragon con as as a uh jet lagged william shatner is trying to check in at the concierge level on the executive floor mm -hmm. in his i'm assuming flying slippers <laughs> that that's that's dragon con for me that's yeah. the sights of wow this is bizarre yeah it's it's the best or the inflatable T-Rexes dancing on the floor to shake it off mm -hmm. and just having a dozen inflatable T-Rexes dancing to the thunderous shake it off. Yeah. Yeah. We have a video from last year's Dragon Con of, of uh, there was an Obi-Wan inflatable T-Rex and a Vader inflatable T-Rex and they were fighting each other with lightsabers. And I was like, I want to live here. <laughs> I never want to leave. So if you were to put together the the ultimate dragon con party for you like what is what is the party you would put together the what's the theme what's what if if you were to come up with a theme for mm. i don't i would i mean maybe to to keep it on theme it would be to to come as your favorite action figure like if an action figure specifically 
had an, a, an outfit or a, or a design set piece, like I would say an action figure party would be really fun and cool. And now I kind of want to see you with Dark Ray, but you've got the Yoda backpack with Grogu in it. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. At, with Dark Grogu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what could you do with the Grogu you have behind you? What mm-hmm. would you do to make him Dark Grogu? Oh, I would give him a robe uh, with a big flowy hood. And uh, maybe I wouldn't want to do anything permanent to him, but maybe like tape some things over his little eyes to make them look red. <laughs> <laughs> with his little red saber yeah and it has tiny little red saber i think that would be great <laughs> but still wearing the chain mail right yeah that's attachment that's... so that's the emotion that's that how drove, he got there drove yeah. him to the dark side <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh, if, uh, if, if i actually did do a cosplay for a action figure themed party though i would have to do super jacked buff leia from the power of the force yeah the the 90s action figure line yeah do leia but like i maybe wear a muscle suit underneath it or something like that (laughs) that would be really cool that is such a bizarre figure that was such a weird figure time yeah but that means alex has to do super jacked bigs yeah which (laughs) he would argue he's already there (laughs) <laughs> but the stash it's just the stash that's super jacked yes it's just three yeah. times the mustache it's like a wilford brimley uh-huh. it's bigs with a brimley <laughs> and, and that's what so uh at this point in the show i normally uh well this is actually the last time because this is the fifth episode and i've been sharing my top five so this mm-hmm. is my number one choice Ooh. and this was difficult to make i had a lot of different variations and i thought you know what there's a character I have more of than any other. For some reason, that's just the thing that I've collected. I've been made fun of before. I made TikToks about being this collection. How Lublin, I'm looking at you uh, for being made fun of for this. But I'll go back to the original version of it. And so my number one choice, the original Darth Vader Kenner action yes. figure from 1978 because they weren't available in 77 <laughs> <laughs> you had the promise of this figure mm-hmm. in 1977 but yeah i mean just five points of articulation he just goes up and he goes yep. down looks from side to side i'm gonna break it this is gonna want to do uh <laughs> you know has has a fun little sitting position yeah. you know well that's now he's having a lot of fun just <laughs> you can do a kick line he's a what's what's the word when you can hyper extend things <laughs> oh i mean he can do I'm like hyper sure. hyper flexible what's that new tiktok trend of doing the splits what's the challenge oh there. yeah he can, he can do he can do the splits there. Uh, uh, there we go <laughs> i love i love those old school toy uh lightsabers it's just like a candle looking little cane thing well and it's also it's in his arm so it goes back down into his arm to store it oh okay slide it all the way back uh there we go so this is how you this is in its (laughs) retracted mode i mean as far as engineering a way to do it and then you and then you push it out yeah it's (laughs) Just, uh, they've, they've, they've come such a long way there normally would be more of a tip oh yeah i mean uh <laughs> this used to have for little little kids probably another quarter of an inch of an even thinner blade on top which mm. of course gets broken off most of these yeah uh and his vinyl cape which is the the vinyl capes are hard to find too like the figures with the capes the fact that i'm doing all of this uh posing of him knowing that this is an unripped vinyl cape is surprising even me that i would (laughs) risk it because these things so this is not my original vader uh folks who watched before or heard me lament it will know that my original star wars collection was given without my knowledge to my cousins at the end of the 80s uh 
So, but my original Vader had a tear all the way across his shoulder mm. and I fixed it with a staple. Oh. And, and if you've ever seen a black vinyl cape with a big silver staple, not really doing any job other than just barely <laughs> holding it together. I mean, as far as fixes, tape would have been smarter, but I thought staple. Uh, but yeah, so the original Vader is my, my number one choice. I think there... staple is the more solid because tape is going to eventually degrade in its its uh, ability to hold things together. But a staple. Yeah, he looks like he wants a hug. <laughs> That's all he wanted. That's, look, it's all, it's all Anakin wanted. He just, just, he just wanted it hug. too much. He just wanted it too much. And he was unable to deal with those emotions in a constructive way. Mm. And he's, you know, it's, and, it's and fun to said, think of Vader <laughs> because Vader and his likeliness as a action figure, because he does have like, I mean, he's half of his body is mechanical. So like how much of his joints can they actually move in, in the movies? Yeah. That's why I've always been when people were complaining about his fights as Vader, it's like, he should be kind of clunky. Shouldn't he? He shouldn't be doing backflips and yeah acrobatics like i'm surprised when you see maul do it in right. phone wars it's like <laughs> come on you have like no lower half how does that <laughs> how do you stay to get what kind of staplers are holding you together that are keeping that from flying apart in the middle that's got to be awkward in the middle of a fight right if he's just mm -hmm. playing like like you're not moving anywhere your legs are back there <laughs> your torso is walking around right now kicking i don't know what He's like, time out. I got to put myself back together. Yeah, hold on. Let me, <laughs> let me crank, crank these two pieces back together. <laughs> Form the Ziploc seal. Uh, so yeah, and actually, you know, as far as sculpting, probably one of the best sculpted figures as far as, I mean, certainly having a helmet works and not a human yeah. face. Yeah. Anything that doesn't have a human face is, is automatically going to look better. Uh, and then I do have two honorable mentions. Of things that I've picked up recently. I don't know if you share. I saw I shared on TikTok recently. Uh, the Power of the Force 2 Bantha. Oh, that is cool. Which, as the package called it, with real feel hair. <laughs> as opposed to, I guess, the more plastic feel hair. Yeah. And it does. You know, it certainly feels like, like hair. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Bantha hair. <laughs> Do you do you ever think that maybe that's a real human here? That someone... I try not. I try not to think about what <laughs> what Hasbro might have been doing in the nineties. <laughs> try and get his eye out there. There we go. Oh, that's cool. I love their mouths. The design of their little their mouths. It's it's kind of creepy when you look close at their mouths and realize they have giant lips. But it's like a Muppet mouth. Yeah. It's got that because it's very flat all the way around. Yeah. I mean. It basically, now that I think about it, is just a hairy dewback. Yeah. Is isn't that the exact same as a dewback mouth? Pretty much has that flat sort of lizard. Yeah, I think so. Are they related? <laughs> is this like the woolly mammoth of the dewback? Mm. Could be. And it's got the Tuscan Raider who's forever riding it. <laughs> For, he he lives up there now. Yeah, somehow there's a tie tie up there. I don't know how exactly that goes on, so I'm not going to mess with it. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So cool. you imagine the executives going, "Well, we got real hair." No, no, say real feel. Don't say real, real hair. No one, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't put that in stores. Real feel hair. <laughs> and the second thing that I acquired uh, is this. Oh, that is cool. So did you know that this existed? So it seems in the Black Series, for a very brief time, they did dioramas with light-up features. Oh, so that's I didn't actually know that. lighting, battery-powered lighting in the figure. I did not know about that. That is really cool. And you have the ability, I think there's posts right there, to put whatever figure you want her lunging. You could put a Jawa down there. <laughs> you could put a droid. I mean, on the back, it shows you know, mm -hmm. the lazy choice. Sure. <laughs> The, the, not the predictable fun. you could put a gamorian guard down there you could put java down there anyone mm -hmm. you want who would you put on the I other side of the diorama uncarplet for sure she's coming after him 
yeah, there's more story we need to hear about <laughs> the years of dealing with him. Uh, uh -huh. What's weird is it doesn't actually show you the figure in like a plastic panel, just more action shots, but it's a great sculpt. Yeah, it looks good. And I and, love the light up part. And shout out to my uh, local comic shop, Memory Lane Comics, which I looked at this on the show. I was like, I, I really should get that but it's probably super expensive and i don't know if you can see 15 bucks what right? Whoa. like how can you <laughs> pass that up that's crazy so at some point uh, there'll be an unboxing what i'm calling a speedy unboxing i don't know if you've seen i've, I've been doing unboxings but then speeding up to less than a minute yeah i have seen those J just to get them done so we'll do a speedy <laughs> unboxing uh we'll have to find an uncar plot it'll be the little you know maybe it's a forced perspective thing so we'll get because there's only a small version of uncar plot that we'll put right there like yeah. he's in the distance and she's running towards him and he's scared yeah and angry <laughs> and just uncar plotty uh well thank you for coming on the show and doing this i hope it hasn't been a, a difficult journey to to rank no. all these things i mean the idea of of telling someone what I did today for 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 work, uh, and and <laughs> being like I I had to pick my five favorite action figure slash figure toys, people would be like, get out! <laughs> like, <laughs> I wrote a thousand emails today, but I talked about. And you're like, about... but I live here. We're in my house. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, get out! This is not right. <laughs> uh where where should people find you what are you doing uh you're doing a ton of stuff what what are all the projects you have going oh we're yeah we we never stop with the star wars stuff um star wars can... seems intent on that they're just throwing yeah. more stuff at you yeah they uh they like to keep us busy but no you can find me uh, i'm on twitter at molly damon you can find me and alex talking star wars every day um on star wars explained on youtube and if you want to see more of our Lego builds, we do those uh, Lego live streams, uh, most mostly Thursdays now, because Wednesdays have become the Star Wars day now. So live streams every Thursdays for, for Lego builds. And pretty soon we're going to start, I think next week on Tuesday, which I don't know when this airs, but Tuesday the 12th, uh, we are going to start playing KOTOR. I've never played KOTOR, so I will have my oh. first playthrough of KOTOR uh, on a live stream starting so next you, week. So you got the bug playing Fallen Order. Yep. yep. Now you're I diving had, in. I had a ton of fun playing Fallen Order on stream, so I was like, you know what? I, I've never played KOTOR. I vaguely know the story, but I would love to, to get to know it more, especially before the remake comes out. So yeah, I'm going to play my through the original. My favorite part of you playing Fallen Order was watching Alex watch you play Fallen Order. And you, like me, played it on story mode because I believe you should enjoy games. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, whereas Alex plays it on the ridiculously hardest level you could possibly do that just punishes you for playing the game. Right. And for him to look at you at some of those boss battles that took <laughs> under five minutes which took him, I don't know, three days, four weeks. I don't know. <laughs> the look on his face was like, what? What? It's done? Yeah. No, no. It, it's too it, easy. It was pretty great having him be so impressed. But in reality, I'm just, I'm more of a button masher kind of video Same. game player. Same. I want, yeah. I want to enjoy it. And I don't want to have to learn new ways to coordinate my very uncoordinated hands. I remember when he was playing through Fallen Order on stream, he was playing playing it on the Grandmaster difficulty level. And it took it took a full two hour, I think, stream to for him to fight and beat Malikos. And I was just like, halfway through that, I was like, come on, like how long are we gonna do this? Oh, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's just going down very tiny amount every time he'd yeah no no knowing is knowing how unforgiving that game can be on that why i don't understand why people i mean i guess challenge sure but there's a point where challenging yourself just becomes 
masochistic. Yeah. And I don't, a, I don't want to cross that with gaming. Sure. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that are already there out there that want to just be punished when they're playing a video game. So yeah. Make me better. <laughs> make me stronger. Make me faster. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, I want to enjoy this and have fun. Can I do that? And yeah. move on to other stuff. I don't want to spend an, a year on a game. Just let me spend a couple of weeks of really enjoying a game. Right. Because uh-huh. it'll take me out of the story if it's going to take me too long to beat something. Yeah, I think maybe that's his aversion to Fortnite is that it's just mm. over too quick. Yeah, maybe. You know, you can get through a match in 15 minutes. I think unless it's punishing to him and there's a <laughs> chance of instant failure. Like I really thought the introduction of Indiana Jones into Fortnite would draw him back in. Mm. So maybe, maybe he'll maybe. come back. Maybe one day. Uh, and then uh, do you have, you know, are you starting to work on more personal projects as well? Anything that's in the offing coming up? Um, if you, if you know about the Schmodown we're we're, I'm still doing a show over there called a certain point of view and, uh, the Schmodown is actually ending They're They're going to have their last season. So a lot of the, people, the final like, Schmodown. Yeah. The final, the final Schmodown. Yeah. Why hasn't anyone <laughs> covered that yet? <laughs> But uh, we, we're going to transition a lot of the stuff over on that channel to just covering, you know, just pop culture, movies, stuff like that. We're still going to have aspects of the show be about trivia. And um, I know we're going to bring back Explain It To Me. When? There have been so many shows. We've been through the entirety of Ms. Marvel and uh, gosh, I'm losing tra- Moon Knight. No, wait, yeah. wait you didn't. No, you didn't do Moon Knight. You didn't do any explain no. to me for Moon Knight. We you just enjoyed it. You did an initial review of the first two episodes. Yeah. Or like a tease of like, hey, we watched it. Nee, 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 nee. No. <laughs> well, he, he we got we did get early screeners for the first couple episodes of Moon Knight. So we we kind of felt obligated to to cover them in, in review format. But for if we don't do anything between now and lord of the rings we are definitely going to cover lord of the rings because that's part of the reason why we started the explain it to me channel because our friend ashton knows more about lord of the rings than we'll ever know about anything he's read the silmarillion (laughs) oh several times he reads that for fun and it's no that's never been the case that that doesn't doesn't happen (laughs) so we we can't wait to to cover that over on explain it to me i'm very excited well you're just that. being deluged with content is the problem yeah. it's, we got too much to talk how about you're going to handle indoor overlapping with Brad, bad batch that's going to be the real <laughs> test yeah they're playing a sick joke on us for with that one just having them over dropping on and dropping on the same night like they couldn't yeah. just have like a day or two gap between them and spread these things out there are more than one day in the week yeah but they're they seem pretty settled on on the Wednesday drops, so we'll yeah, see. Yeah, but they have Marvel dropping on the same day is the thing that really just yeah. Well, it has been great talking to you and having you on the show, uh, and everyone should check out everything that Molly does uh, just across <laughs> the board, and uh, go see her at all the conventions. Uh, I'm sure that you'll be seeing the her and Alex at Dragon Con and yeah. at Celebration next year. Mm-hmm. and on many 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 streams so go check all that out and if you uh like force five in the show and me and things that i do consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash ken plume that'd be swell i'd appreciate that uh and still haven't worked out a proper way to end this show so i think the only way to end it is just to say goodbye bye bye, bye.